Folks, we are pleased to be joined by our good friend uh, Lilo Staten, who is healthcare writer. Check her out on NJ Spotlight News. She's a regular contributor. It's a great news operation. Check out that broadcast as well as Metro Focus for the daily situation. We're looking at the COVID situation, big picture on February 2nd. So Lilo, let me ask you this. Last time you're with us, I said it again, moving target. This will be seen three weeks from now, a month from now. So while we don't know every detail, my question is this. Overall, what the heck is wrong with the vaccine distribution? Just a small question, Lilo. <laughs> Can we, quote, blame it on one entity, or is it across the board? It's, it, it's complicated, right? I mean, I, I wish it was easier. Trust me, I wish it was easier. I hosted an event on this last week, and there was no you know, shortage of wrath from the viewers and commentators. And I get it, I get it. The problem is, you know, you know, as a person in the media, you're stuck in between. You can only provide the answers that we're getting from public officials, right? So what are public officials telling us? Well, they're telling us, you know, they're doing their best to build this system. It is, you know, slower rollout than they would like. It's slower rollout clearly than needs. They, they built a new registration system. That's part of the problem. They being, Lilo. Um, they, they. I'm sorry, they being the state. They, they being the state. And they're clearly like issues with, you know, sort of how they've done this or that and which groups they've chosen. And you can quibble with that. But there is also, you're absolutely right. There is this sort of overarching issue of, are we getting enough vaccines? And the answer to date has been no, we haven't. I mean- As of so, now, yeah, as of February 2nd. So right. I'm gonna push that issue. Sorry for interrupting, Lilo. If vaccine distribution, supply and distribution were multiplied by three or four, meaning massive, massive amounts, more would be available grammatically. I'm sure that wasn't right. Question, <laughs> would that by itself dramatically improve the vaccine distribution system. Well, it's funny that you say that because I talked to a number of people, including someone in the supply chain process um, last week, and they said, you know, the supply chain so far is going pretty well. Vaccines are getting where they need to go. We haven't heard too many issues about that. But they said, yeah, well, wait till we scale this all up multiple, multiple times. So I think there is a concern. You know, there was a concern at the beginning about a shortage of healthcare workers to actually give the shots. Um, you know, you think it's so easy, but if you can't actually get the shot in someone's arm, if you don't have somebody licensed and available to do that, um, you know. But the, excuse me, Leo, Leo, they knew it was coming. When I say that, here's the thing. I'm not, yeah. Blaming is not only useless, it's counterproductive and frankly petty. Question, if warp speed was working as well as it was and the anticipation was that it was happening, how could there be a, an issue with supply of healthcare well, workers to administer, that's not making sense to me as a layperson. No, I agree with you. And I think there's blame on both the federal and state. So federally, we've had these shortages of healthcare workers for, for years, right? Um, but the state, you know, there's also blame on the state. Um, they, they did not appear to activate their volunteer system for this until after the vaccine rollout started, as far as I can tell, or at least they didn't make a public plea for, for help. I mean, it seems to me that if they've been planning this, they being the state since March, you know, that would have been a box that was checked, especially when that was something everybody knew was going to be a problem. But, you know, same with the registration system. You'd think they'd build a centralized system that is, you know, more efficient. Things don't always work out as you can. But of course, if you still don't have enough vaccines coming down from the feds, it's not going to work. But the question is, even with your, your question is a good one. Even if more come down, do we have the infrastructure to support that? And I hate to say, but time will tell. I mean, I'd yeah. like to say yes, but, you know, it's a question of how quickly it scales up and, and can systems keep pace. And by the way, check out Lilo on a regular basis on NJ Spotlight News with our anchor, Brianna Finozzi, who is absolutely the best with a terrific team. The day-to-day -day situation will be reported there. Let me ask you this, Lilo. Um, African-American, Latino yeah. um, people, I don't want to say numbers because that's ridiculous. We're dealing with people. The percentages are way, the percentage is way too low of the vaccines administered as of today for those who are black and brown. What's going on? 
That's a question I posed to the state. I hope to have an answer for you um, in a day or so, and hopefully a story about it. Um, but, you know, or what they can do. I, we know why it's going on, basically. We know that um, there's, there's, con there's concern in the communities about, um, you know, vaccines, about being guinea pigs. There's historic reason to believe that. Well, um, Tuskegee experiment, et cetera. <laughs> You cannot do this story without talking about Tuskegee, exactly, um, and and that's totally legitimate. Um, have you know the systems, the state and private systems, done enough to try to reach out to them um, to get Black and Brown communities uh, to, to make sure that there's a way that they can get easily vaccinated? You know, that's kind of what we're trying to find out. But the numbers are the numbers are disturbing. Remember, this is also a disease that impacts. I just did the math. You know, Hispanics, 26 percent of the cases are Hispanic individuals, 12 percent are black individuals. Um, you know, Hispanics make up, uh, you know, less than 20 percent of the population. So that's, you know, there's a huge disparity there. Um, black folks are far more likely to die, um, you know, than their white counterparts, as are Hispanics. And, you know, there are reasons for this. There are reasons because of the jobs that they're likely to hold, because of the racism and the system because of the housing. I mean, so much of it comes back to yeah. not just race, as someone said to me, but racism. And yep. I think we need to be honest about that. And by the way, a minute left, uh, check out our ongoing series, Confronting Racism, to talk more about structural institutional racism, particularly in healthcare. Lila, last question. I've asked everyone, and again, it's the 2nd of February as we were taping, what is the message you believe that should be, deliver should be delivered on the variants connected to the vaccines? Go ahead. I don't panic because um, the very, I mean, it makes the vaccines all the more important, but we have to remember that while they may be um, more, more virulent uh, and possibly even more deadly, it, it's the same stuff we got to do. We got to still wear the mask. We got to wash our hands. We got to social distance and we got to stay home when we're sick. And, you know, if I can leave people with that, unfortunately, that's what we're going to have to be doing yeah. for some time. So enjoy it, I guess, to the best of our ability. Uh, well said. By the way, other than checking out NJ Spotlight News uh, every day during the week, real quick, the website for people to find out more uh, about your writing and your colleagues with uh, our great colleague, John Mooney, et cetera. What is it? NJSpotlightNews.org now. NJSpotlightNews.org. NJSpotlightNews.org, all one. Or Google. Hey, Leo, thank you for everything you're doing every day, you and your colleagues and the team at NJ Spotlight News. I have no idea where we'd be which is not great already, without that team. Thank you, Lilo. Good luck. Thank you, Steve. I'm Steve Adubato. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey Sharing Network, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, NJM Insurance Group, the Northward Center, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Investors Bank, NJ Best, and by Fedway Associates, Inc. Promotional support provided by bestofnj.com and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. NJM Insurance Company has been serving New Jersey policyholders for more than 100 years. But just who are NJM's policyholders? They're the men and women who teach our children the public sector employees who maintain our infrastructure, the workers who craft our manufactured goods, and New Jersey's next generation of leaders, the people who make our state a great place to call home. NJM, we've got New Jersey covered.